All right, 2021 season's finally kicking off and it always starts with the ultimate favorite hunt of the year. It's our annual uh, spring bear hunt. So Neville and I are going here the first couple weeks of May and this year we're gonna kind of switch it up and do a backpack style spring bear hunt rather than our normal like truck hunting. So we're gonna back back in, go to some spots I've uh, visited a lot when I lived up in Montana and it should be an awesome time. So I'm just gonna run you through all the gear I'm gonna take on the 2021 spring bear hunt. So I'll start off again. Uh, all the clothes I'm going to be wearing on the hunt. So, as you most of you all know by now, I wear the Sika silk boxers. But this year, I'm also going to have these uh, sacks. I think these are the Quest. I'll keep these in the truck, just in case we end up going back after one of us kills a bear, and I'll uh, just probably switch out. That way, I can stay a little bit cleaner than normal on these bear hunts because you get a little uh, dirty by the end of the week. Pants. I'm going to be using the Sika mountain pants. Love these pants. Uh, this is a great pant for just like varying weather conditions because you know we don't know exactly what the temps are going to be yet since we're about a month out from the hunt but it's going to cover a lot of varying temperatures from the mornings to the evenings and I'll uh, you know won't get too hot won't get too cold that sort of thing I actually do have the knee pads installed in these love the knee pads for sitting down glassing uh, cutting up an animal that sort of thing so sick of mountain pants for one of the tops I always wear is just a core lightweight hoodie this is as you guys all know my all-time favorite piece of Sitka. You know, it has a sweet articulating hood. I wear this a lot just to keep the sun out so I don't bake my ears and bake the back of my neck. And it's just a really versatile piece that uh, just works well, especially when you have to wear blaze orange in Montana. You have to have a heavy blaze orange vest. So I try to go the lightest piece underneath that I can. Then when it gets a little colder, mornings, evenings, sitting around glassing, I always have a core heavyweight hoodie. And then again, like I just mentioned too, since Montana requires you to uh, have orange, this is the Sitka Ballistic Vest, and this one's actually Neville's since I somehow forgot mine. But I like the way Neville's is nice and clean, so I might have to go home and uh, wash my orange. It hasn't been washed in a long time. So headwear, this is the, just the Go Hunt Blaze Beanie, and as well as the Blaze Trucker. Got to keep those just so we can you know, make sure we have that orange requirement at all times. My all-time favorite pair of gloves. These gloves go everywhere with me, like working around camp, setting up that sort of thing, to glassing, to hiking. The Sika Gunner gloves are my all-time favorite. And I actually lost a pair of these when I was in Colorado last year. Almost, I like, couldn't handle losing it and tried going back and finding it, but had to go and buy a new pair. So these are my all-time favorite gloves, just do-it-all gloves. My hands do get cold quite a bit, because long extremities. So I do bring some glassing mittens, usually the Sika Blizzard GTX mitts. And the neat thing about these, if I don't want to wear the outer shell, they do just have a little, uh, mitten on the inside. It's also good too if it's raining and stuff like that too to toss this on. Even if I just want to put my gloves underneath it and do whatever you do, glassing, that sort of thing with these mitts. Another one of my layering pieces, I used to not be a soft shell guy, but I've kind of switched over to, you know, bringing a soft shell because I just love a soft shell because it's so durable. I can, you know, beat around the brush with it, sit there, lean back when I'm glassing on some rocks, sticks, whatever, and don't have to worry about, you know, maybe damaging some of my other stuff. You know, everything is durable, just, just think and handle it all. This is the Sitka jet stream. You never know what temperatures are gonna be on a bear hunt, especially in the spring. So I always pack uh, insulation layers. So this is the Sitka Kelvin light down three quarter pant. And then I also have the Sitka, Sitka Kelvin light down uh, jacket. So again, awesome pieces. Wear them at night if it gets cold. If I you know, decide to carry a lighter weight sleeping bag, you already have all these layers with you. So to me, I'll utilize them when I'm sleeping if need be but just great to have when you're sitting on glassing and being really comfortable. So after all that, you can see I definitely, you know, love Sika gear, love all the layering system they have, and I just, I'm just super comfortable wearing it and know how it to uh, accommodate different seasons with what I need, but this is just basically bear necessities is all I really need for a uh, spring bear hunt. And it's a lot of the same stuff I will take to on a later, uh, like rifle deer hunts and stuff like that. Uh, footwear, I always carry the Darn Tough. Uh, these, I believe these are the 212. And I usually have a liner sock and boots. These are the Hanwag Alverstone 2. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal boot. I took these last year in a uh, high country Colorado muzzler hunt. Great boot for that. It's also gonna be a great boot for uh, rocking, um, you know, spring bear hunts. And then inside here, as you can't see, but I do have the uh, sheep feet uh, insoles in there. Really, really cool thing, the sheep feet. Super comfortable. So this year, I'm kind of switching up the backpack a little bit. And I actually, a couple weeks ago, just picked up Stone Glacier Sky Guide 7900 backpack. It's gonna take me a while to get used to saying that since I'm so used to uh, 
Sky Archer all the time, but I just wanted to go with the bigger backpack because as some of you might know, I'm starting to carry a BTX now and whenever a 115 comes in, I'll have a 115 objective. So you need a bigger bag, start carrying all this stuff because I'm going heavy there and trying to stay light other places. So you see, it is a brand new bag. Have not put it on yet, have not used it. So I'm excited to try it out. And I was gonna toss it on my frame for this video, but then I got to noticing, this is X-curve frame, that this thing needs a wash badly. I've never washed it since owning it. And the straps are getting really, really crispy and kind of hard to use. So this weekend I got to uh, clean this before I start throwing it on my bag. On here I do have, it's probably gonna be hard to see, but I do have the uh, Stone Glacier's little uh, weapon carrier system on there. And then camping gear. So since we're doing a backpack hunt this year, I was tossing around whether I wanted to bring a skyscraper or the Sky Air ULT. And after seeing Neville do his video, and he's like, Brady, you got a lot of freaking crap because you got a big heavy BTX. So I decided to switch it at the last second. And I think I'm definitely going to be running the Sky Air ULT this year. So it's just a great ultra light camp setup. Doesn't take up that much space in my backpack when we have all sorts of stuff we have to bring on a backpack bear hunt. So I'll save weight and go that route. And I will have to have a trekking pole too, which I don't have sitting here, but I just have a uh, black diamond Ergo cork trekking poles that I'll bring to uh, help pitch that. Sleeping pad is the Thermarest um, Neo Air Uber Light. This thing is super lightweight, still has a great R value. And luckily, unlike Neville, I've never popped mine. And then pillow, just my old standalone. Don't know how I've never popped it yet since I beat the crap out of it in my backpack, but it's just the uh, Climate XL inflatable pillow. Sleeping bag. So I also have a Stone Glacier Chilkoot 15 and I'll be bringing it on this hunt and then I'll be stuffing it into, I can't remember what size this is, but it's a uh, Sea to Summit. Ooh, it's actually a size small. Size small Sea to Summit compression sack. So I'll be jamming in there trying to get everything as small as I can. And also what I'll probably do later is uh, I have a bunch of stuff sacks at home and I can actually stuff this quite a bit smaller too. I do have the stakes for the uh, Sky Air as well. And along with the backpack, since it's Montana, since it's bear hunting and it's spring, it's gonna rain. So I always uh, have a rain fly with too. Speaking of rain, I just forgot my rain gear, I realized. I was at home, I was gonna take my rain gear out and my cat was nearby and I did not want my cat jumping on my nice rain gear. So rain gear I use, you've probably seen, I use the uh, Sika Dew Point, the, the new 2021 Sika Dew Point and it's a pyrite color. So I have the jacket and the pants and that, so. Again, this is why you do this stuff early in the year so you can figure out where everything is and help you take this in a box, go home, make sure I write down what I need because I've already forgotten a few things. Let's jump into the rifle since it's front and center. Rifle, this is my baby. Um, did a bunch of videos on this guy this last year. This is the rifle I built uh, during COVID. I figured might as well, nothing else really to do besides uh, we're gonna rifle under a bunch of downtime. So I set this rifle up. This is the Browning X-Bolt varmint target to the max stock and it's a 300 win mag and this rifle comes in 15 pounds three ounces somewhere like that and that's including bipod sling and a couple rounds two rounds of ammo on the side so again I mentioned 300 win mag i got a uh, rugged ridge bipod on the front and then for the scope it's vortex's big dog it's their razor hd gen 2 four and a half to 27 just absolutely love this scope it's heavy, the tracks super, super well, and I just love how accurate all the clicks are on here. Very easy to use, very easy to set up, and just super repeatable. I do have a uh, short action um, precision throw lever on the side. Just makes it a lot easier going from low power to high power in those situations. Obviously, you can see here I got front and end caps. Maybe my Vortex, Vortex pre precision rings. I believe these are the, uh, the low, potentially. I can't remember, I'll have to look it up, but I also have a uh, Tally Picatinny rail and then a uh, Flatline Ops Patriot Plus scope level. I will never have a rifle without a scope level. I feel like it's essential. I believe that rounds it out. Quake rifle sling. As you can see here, I got an adjustable um, part of my stock in the back. And then at the top, I do have a Area 419 Sidewinder Magnum brake, just for helping tracking impacts and it makes it hella loud. Oh, and you can see on the side too, dimension short action precision two round ammo holder. And then for ammo, so it's my hand loads. So this is just a uh, Norma Brass Federal 215 match primer, H1000 powder, and uh, 215 Burger hybrid bullets. And they eat. Oh, we also got the uh, 
go hunt gun slicker. Just, I put this over it, not really for padded protection, but mainly just to keep everything, you know, waterproof, quote unquote waterproof. So it helps protect the action from a bunch of water, rain getting in there. It also helps protect the muzzle, but I also will uh, take some electrical tape and tape the end of the muzzle. And then I usually carry roughly 10 rounds when I'm going hunting. So I'll fill up this old uh, ammo holder with 10 rounds on the side and I'll throw two on there. So I'll probably rock 12. Then along with the weapon, I do have the Rugged Ridge rear support. I mean, this is the one I painted orange back in the day before they started selling an orange one just to uh, prevent me from setting it down and losing it. But absolutely love this for taking steady shots. And another piece of information too with my rifle, big data guy. So I will, before the season, get all my stuff doped and everything entered into the Kestrel 5700 Elite. So they're basically ultimate ballistics, weather meter, you can do everything with it. And then also at the same time, I got the SIG Kilo 2400 ABS. Just again, gra grabbing all my, you know, atmospheric conditions, all my ranges, just use this. And then if I need to get up some wind, I can use them interchangeably too. Let's talk about some of this other miscellaneous stuff I got sitting around here. Pepper spray. We are going to be in potential grizzly country. You just never know when you're in Montana. So I will be packing some uh, pepper spray and this will always be holstered on my backpack. And again, the whole uh, bear precaution, since we're going to be backpacking, I will bring some Z-Pack slick line and this has a little carabiner on the back just to hang our food and stuff like that at camp. And then once we kill one of the bears, hang a bunch of meat and hide and that sort of thing, get off the ground, get away from camp. So we can stay safe and keep uh, killing bears. Ear protection. I have these in every single video and I will admit that I forget to use these on every single hunt. I even got to the point where I'll throw it on my neck and I'll still forget it in the heat of the moment is. So I'm gonna try to get better this year because this last year in Idaho, I rang my ears hard when I killed a buck because it was a bunch of burned trees. The muzzle was right next to a burned tree and it echoed back at me and it hurt like hell. So hopefully I'll remember to finally use these this year. But this is the Dark Energy Poseidon charger. Keep everything from, you know, my inReach charged, my cell phone charged, that sort of thing. And also have a Gold Zero. I think it's a Nomad 7. I'm gonna bring that this year just so we can stay charged up with all of our, you know, mapping stuff, phones, inReach, that sort of thing. A little lens cloth, phone scope, a little Bluetooth button, a bunch of Zeiss cleaning wipes. Love these guys. Just again, keeping all your optics clean. Especially these things come in handy because I tend to, uh, sometimes in the heat of the moment, you might drop your rangefinder, gets a little dirty, just keep care, take care of your equipment and it will uh, perform well for you. So I'd like to try to keep them clean when I'm in the field. Bunch of extra camera batteries for my Sony. Got a little uh, lens pen here. And then this is a little uh, two second delay, little thing for my camera. So we can take a bunch of harvest pictures or take a bunch of night shots. And then I believe, oop, got one more little cord. This is just a little, uh, I don't know what kind of cord you call it, micro USB for charging the InReach Mini. So again, I will mention too, carry this in every hunt. Everyone knows why, backcountry peace of mind, can text your family, let everyone know you're safe. And unfortunately, if you need to, you can contact work and deal with work related things while you're hunting. So I have to keep a lot of my miscellaneous stuff in there. So headlamps, big promoter of carrying two headlamps on there. Just ask any, person you've ever hunted with and they've had batteries die at one point or someone forgot their headlamp. So carrying two, it's gonna always allow you to have light, especially when we're in grizzly country again. So just safety, that sort of thing, navigation. This is the Petzl Reactic Plus and this is the Petzl Actic. The reason I really like this one a lot is it's chargeable. It doesn't take any batteries. So again, I can use my dark energy. I can use the Goal Zero and just plug it in with a little cord I can leave this one plugged in during the day around camp. And then I could take this one that actually uses triple A's and back and forth. This one also has a uh, little Petzl's, can't remember what it's called, but they're rechargeable battery pack as well. That's why I tried to get rid of all triple A's, double A's, just useless things I don't need to carry and just have rechargeable things and just more lightweight options. Try to stay light here and there where I can because uh, I'm carrying much other heavy stuff, heavy gun, that sort of thing. Okay, so the rest of the stuff I carry in this uh, camp pole by Stone Glacier is basically what I consider my kill kit. Um, inside here, I have a work sharp sharpener and that's gonna be used for the uh, Goat Knives Tur Carbon Pro. It's a fixed blade knife. Absolutely love this knife. For a while I wasn't a fixed blade fan, but sort of switched back over. I carry both, 
Um, this is really useful for dealing with hide, especially bare hide. So getting all that off and then not dulling a bunch of other blades. But in here I do have a bunch of uh, replaceable blades because I have the uh, Goat Knives Capra Hunter TI. Great, great invention because it has these little bits on the back. And you can pop those out, put them in here, and then it's basically like a little wrench. So I have different sizes for these for different parts of my rifle. If something went wrong, who knows? I could tighten things down, potentially reside everything in and still be good. What I also like to do with these two is I keep one that will be for my tripod. That way if the tripod leg gets loose, I can just throw that bit on there and then crank it down, that sort of thing, or even a, uh, you know, like a camera plate or a plate in the bottom of my uh, spotting scope. So I got a miscellaneous medical kit, bandages, waterproof matches, some moleskin. This little bag is made by Z-Packs and it actually has some uh, rubber bands in here and it has another uh, uh, rangefinder battery in case my other one goes out. Rubber bands I use for putting around the mouth of an animal just to help, uh, you know, the animal look a little bit better later on. I can take photos so the jaw's not falling down on an animal. And then I got a couple different lighters in here. You never know when a lighter's gonna fail on you. I have a really small Bic lighter, then I also have a larger Bic lighter, and this is the one that has a bunch of Luco tape wrapped around it. And I don't know why I don't have it here, but one of my dark energies that I have at home has some more Luco tape wrap, wrapped around it. So you never know when you, your friend, whatever, some gear things, you might need some tape, so I have Luco tape wrapped around here. And then wherever my uh, trekking poles are, I also have uh, duct tape and electrical tape wrapped around my trekking poles for fixing things around camp. In here, this bag I probably need to uh, get rid of. Looks like a bunch of these pills have blown open recently. But I have a bunch of salt pills, um, some Advil, that sort of thing in here, electrolyte type stuff. But probably need to go through that bag and figure out which is good and which is still bad because it's looking a little dirty. Ooh, got some more blades, some of my water purification stuff in here. This is the uh, Aquamira Drops. Part A, Part B, can't really see on here, but I usually mark them Part A and then B. Definitely need to go back and take a marker on there. I use these over the other ones just because a little bit smaller, saving a little bit of weight. Obviously, probably not a lot of weight, but I don't really need a ton on a hunt. You don't need one of those giant bottles, so I just converted over one of these two. And I've actually had some of the other bottles to puncture quite a bit. Don't know why. So these have never punctured. They're actually pretty durable. Electrical tape for attaching tags, fixing stuff again. Got a little tiny toothbrush. Get made fun of that a lot, trying to save some weight. Uh, and then here is the uh, phone scope adapter for my BTX. Jump over, ooh, I guess we could talk about this too. It's a little uh, rocket air blower thing, clean enough, whatever. Lenses, cameras, spotting scope, that sort of thing. So, optics. For this hunt, I am carrying the marsupial, I believe this is the large, uh, fully enclosed bino harness. And recently on the back, I actually took their buckle delete kit and added these different style buckles just to help uh, keep it up a little higher because I hate when the bino harnesses rise lower and the buckle delete kit actually allows me to suck this up a little bit tighter to these straps, allows it to stay high on my chest. And on the side, it's got a little bit of some wind indicator. And the inside, my favorite binos of all time, Vortex Razor UHD uh, 12 by 50s. And you will note right now, I do not have my little tethers that go onto here because I have them on a different pair of binos right now, but gotta have those on there. Don't be like other people in this office, no, and uh, drop stuff. All right, so on the bottom, I'm a big promoter of glassing off a tripod, so I have Vortex's bino stud right there, and this is and Vortex's Pro Bino Adapter. Super slick, just goes right on there, and then you just twist, tighten it down, and you can lock it in place if you need to, all the way. And on the bottom, just the Arca Swiss uh, plate, since all my optics are Arca Swiss. And I find that super, super valuable, super easy to use. So again, this is kind of the reason I switched backpacks this year, kind of switching up my whole glassing situation because you can't kill what you can't find. And I just wanted to try to find some ways to gain an edge. And I love glassing. And so this is just gonna be a way for me to glass comfortably a lot longer and pick out animals that I probably won't be able to pick up before. I picked this up in uh, November before my family's mule deer hunt and absolutely love it. Swarovski BTX, uh, BTX eyepiece. And right now I'm borrowing a 95 millimeter um, objective. I'm waiting for a 115. And 115 is gonna be huge. It's already kind of scaring me a little bit how big it is, but I'm gonna actually absolutely love it once I put it on here. So just borrowing the 95 right now. Can't wait to uh, take this on a mule deer hunt in the mountains with it. I will be back backpacking with it all year and of course backpacking on this spring bear hunt too. And then it's just the uh, marsupial BTX 
uh, cover. If I'm gonna you know, spend the money on a BTX, I wanna protect it. So I'm actually going to be bringing this on this backpack hunt. Biggest thing on spring bear hunt is I feel like getting away from those dang ticks. Uh, there's ticks everywhere, they're super annoying. Super not fun to deal with. So grassing chairs are a way to get off the ground, get away from the ticks, and also add some comfort in long day glassing sessions. Because bears, you know, you sit there and glassing a ton. And so this is just gonna aid in glassing comfort, sitting there on the BTX, and also just the thought in your head that maybe ticks can't climb metal. And it seemed to work last year quite a bit, because uh, when Neville would sit down in glass, on the ground he had a bunch of ticks. I did not have ticks using this chair. So this is a Hill Sound uh, glassing chair. This is the, uh, the taller version. I believe it's the 17 inch of the BTR. So glass and chair, great, great thing to have. And it's very, very lightweight too. So right now I do have this in here and I'm uncertain if I'm actually gonna bring it. It's kind of nice to have around camp or just like lounge around next to a tree if it is raining and we're trying to glass and stuff like that. And if I don't want to use the chair, but this is an old, just a Thermarest Z, Z rest, I believe it was a big sleeping pad that I've just cut a lot smaller and use it as a glassing pad. And what's nice too about this, I kind of cut it a little long that way I can like stack it up if I need to, or use two, or if I want to get crazy and lay in it more, I guess, while I'm glassing. Okay, now we'll jump over to the tripod. And the tripod, same one I've been using forever, as you can tell, it's seen a lot of mountains, seen a lot of animals. Uh, Serial 1204XL, and I'm, just like I always have to do, this is a discontinued model of the Serial tripod. The other day, Trail and I were looking at a bunch of tripods, trying to figure out what we're gonna go with, and uh, there's actually gonna be uh, something new coming out from Sirius. So we're gonna wait a little bit and try to see what it is before we make the switch. But right now, Sirius 1204 XL allows me to glass standing up, sitting down, very versatile tripod, and still very lightweight too. And on top of that is the Sirius BA5 head, uh, Arca Swiss compatible. Like I mentioned earlier, all my stuff's Arca Swiss. So it works out really, really well. For some reason I have one of my uh, iPhone cords over here. So another thing I carry in uh, all this other gear is an iPhone cord for like I said, charging out the side and the solar panel, that sort of thing. And the phone, this is just the uh, 12 Pro Max iPhone. Um, I'm hoping by the time we leave that the phone scope case for this is out because otherwise right now I don't have anything phone scope with. So hopefully we'll get one by then. Uh, jump over some more, uh, I guess, camping stuff now. Camp cook area. So water, I have the, uh, Platypus, I believe this is the Big Zip 3 liter. Need water, need to drink it often. So this is very handy for that. And then I also have been starting to carry around an Nalgene lately just for grabbing water on, on the fly. And we see some or melting snow, which is what um, I'm hoping we actually run to with some snow up high. You can get a bunch of water without having to dive off and find other water sources. So this will be really useful for gathering snow and melting snow. And then the stove, this is the MSR wind burner. Um, a lot of other lightweight options. I have some more lightweight stoves at home, but this is just gets the job done and it helps me melt snow quite a bit. Like I was in uh, Idaho this past fall, I had to melt snow for all my water. You just gotta watch out not to get some pine needles in there because if you melt snow with pine needles, your water's gonna taste like garbage. More on the water side, I also do bring a uh, MSR, I believe this is a drone light. I uh, can't remember how big it is, six liter maybe. Uh, just have that in case we need to get water at camp, that's where at camp. So you can't hunt if you're not hydrated. And then another water purification thing is the Sawyer Squeeze. Love this little guy, it's super light, super easy to use. And I don't have to uh, deal with a bunch of extra cords and stuff like that coming out of these other water filters, but super convenient. Game bags, uh, these are just uh, four of the Caribou Gear. I believe these are the Carnivore 3. Just like to carry four. I think that's all I really need for bears. So I've usually been using in the past and it's worked really well. So I always have game bags. Got to prepare to kill at all times. So keep those on me all day long. This is the uh, Sea to Summit titanium uh, long spork. And then the last, but probably most important piece of gear on this whole thing are my Crocs. You can't go mountain hunting without Crocs. Great around camp. Just chilling at the end of the day, kick your boots off want to enjoy time, especially bear hunting a lot of times, mornings aren't that productive. So hang out camp, put some Crocs on. And this year I'm kind of want, wanting to make a goal that kill a bear in my Crocs. Hopefully it'll be a bear somewhere around camp and we can just roll out of bed in the morning, sit there in glass, hunt and shoot them from camp. That is all my gear in a nutshell. Uh, obviously there's tons of different ways to do this. You don't need 
as much optics. You could probably go a lot less. You don't need a big, giant, heavy rifle. But again, rifle kills, so I like a heavy weapon, and I like to have big optics because you can't kill what you can't find. So if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments below. Ask me anything about any of this gear, and I'll be glad to elaborate further onto that. Be sure to like and subscribe. Everything in front of me is what I carry on the spring bear hunt. If you guys want a more detailed look at all this gear, there will be an article that's gonna follow with a giant spreadsheet of all the gear. And you can check all the specs, all the weight of all the items. And then also, what Neville and I are gonna do is we're actually gonna take all of our gear, throw it in our backpack, and actually show you guys on a scale, real world weight, exactly where we're gonna carry, exact water we're gonna carry while we hike up in there so you can see what this all weighs. So you have a better picture of what it'll be. So that'll be a separate video coming up. So stay tuned for those.